What up and welcome back to Board Reviews, Jody here. And today we are going to go over the differences that Nick and I noticed in the UK versus the United States. So if you like this video, go ahead and like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be aware of our next uploaded video. All right, first things first, I apologize. I know this is in portrait and the YouTube world is in landscape and I ask you to please forgive me and I thank everybody who's put up with all my portrait videos. Um, there's only a couple of them. It's Scotland, England, Paris, this video and Corf Castle, that's it. I promise, I'm sorry. But if you just do me a favor and take your phone, flip it into portrait view, full, uh, full screen it, you should be good. If you're watching this on a computer or TV, I'm sorry. I apologize. I really, really do. Okay, so I took pictures of almost all the differences that I wanted to show you guys, but there were a couple that I didn't take pictures of that I wanted to talk to you about first. So first thing is that we noticed there's not a lot of dryers in the UK. Um, as we are riding the train down from Scotland through England, we noticed that a lot of the uh, backyards of the houses had uh, clothes wires, clothes hangers. They had like this contraption that you put clothes on, okay? Forgive me for not knowing exactly what it's called. Um, I'm sure mo many houses have dryers, but at least in cities that we live in, in the United States, we all have dryers. You have a wash machine and a dryer. And this way, if you know you want to wear an outfit, but it's dirty, you're like, oh, I'll just plop it in the wash. Zoop, zoop, zoop switch it over to the dryer and it's done in 30 minutes to an hour and a half depending on what cycle you chose to put it on and then you go you have your clothes it's lovely i'm sure that hanging up your clothes is probably better for the longevity of your garments your outfits and i'm sure it makes them all nice and air freshened but a dryer is just convenient um, the other notices that I don't have photos of are pretty much all to do with cars. And again, I'm not going to talk about driving on the left side of the road and the steering wheel on the right side of the car. Like that's obvious. Everybody knows that we can move on from that. But some of the differences that we noticed were in England, there was a lot of service stations, which was really, really nice. Um, every, you know, so many miles you can pull over, get some food, fill up uh, your car with gas. And it was just kind of like a nice little area just to have a rest stop and with multiple different um, areas to eat, restaurants, fast foods, really not restaurants, fast foods. In the United States, at least from like Nevada and to California, Nevada to Utah and to Arizona, the places that we've driven as opposed to flying, you don't have too many service stations, if any. And if you do, they're just um, really toilets. They're not really gas places. You would just pull off at an exit in town and fill up your tank or get some food if you needed to do that. Another thing that we noticed is when you do fill up your gas, that in England, you fill it first and then you pay, which is nice because you know exactly how much you're paying. In the United States, it's backwards. You pay first and then you fill up. So you can either pay at the pump or you can go into the actual um, building and pay. If you pay at the pump, I recommend using your credit card. Sometimes people will put a card reader in the slot and it can steal your card information. The gas stations do go and check for it, but you know, sometimes it gets missed. But you can just go in and pay by cash or card and if you pay by cash it's cheaper and then if you you just tell them a limit like you want to pay $60 to fill up your car and if you're filling up your car is over that $60 and it just stops at 60 and that's it you're done you just don't have a full tank or if it's less than $60 you just go in and get your change and of course you can give them as much money as you want you don't have to say 60 um, and then another thing we realized is that the cars in England get way better gas mileage than the cars in the United States. So Nick and I drove about four and a half, five hours and the gas gauge barely moved. And I was freaking out. I was like, we should be on empty right now or close to empty. Like something is wrong with this car. Why is the gas gauge not moving? So we pulled off at a rest stop at a service station and we filled up and Nick's like, you won't believe how many gallons it took. And I was like, what? And he's like, Three, three gallons. That's all the car needed. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Um, in the United States, if you have a compact car, a sedan, you're probably going to get about 25 to 30 miles per gallon. Um, and then if you're driving an SUV, you're going to get about 17. You could even get down to like 15 if it's like a really big SUV to like maybe 22, 23 miles per gallon. Uh, we've had several SUVs and 
we probably get 17 to like 21 miles per gallon. And again, this is on the freeway or the motorway. This is not just like on your around town. It's a way worse around town. It's like when you're just driving on stop and smooth. Um, so those were some pleasant, nice things that we noticed. I would totally love to just buy a car from England and have it shipped to the United States and get that incredible gas mileage. But everything else I have photos for. So let's take a gander at the other notices that we made in the UK. Okay, so photo time so you can kind of physically see what I'm talking about. Another strange thing about the UK, which I had heard about and was told about before we left, was that you have to pay for the restrooms. <laughs> now, you don't have to pay for every restroom, but quite a few of the public restrooms or toilets, as they're called, you had to pay 20 to 30 pence for. Um, and this was very different in the United States. Public restrooms are free. You just go in and use them. Um, if you're at a very, very touristy place, like maybe on the beach in California, you might have to pay for something in order to use the restroom. But typically, you can just go into a fast food, a gas station, a supermarket, or some type of superstore like Target or Walmart, and you just use the restroom and leave. Nobody's going to get mad at you. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to notice. Sticking with the bathroom theme, one of the things I loved about the UK was the privacy in the stalls. You, There's no gaps. You can't see underneath the stall. You can't see in between the doors. Like you're completely secluded and like in complete privacy in the stall. In the United States, we've got these large gaps and you can see right through them. It's on both sides of the doors and underneath the stall. In fact, it's not uncommon to look under the stall to see if you have feet or to look through the cracks like this. Like, oh, look, somebody sent out the toilet. Just kidding. So sorry. And you move on. Like, this is very, very common um, just to see through it the cracks of the stalls. And so that was kind of like a cool feature that, you know, you have this complete privacy in the UK. And I really want to know why we cannot have it in the United States because the gaps are ridiculous. Another thing is that all the stalls had trash bins, which was really nice. They were large and, you know, if you need to use them, you could put whatever you want in there, you know, diapers, whatever. In the United States, we have just these little tiny metal things right here and they, they slam closed and they're super loud and they're super gross and disgusting and they're hardly ever emptied. Um, so that was kind of a nice difference. The biggest thing that just threw me off was the toilet paper size. I mean, one square in the United States is like four squares in the UK to the point that for a few days when I was trying to rip off the toilet paper, I was like, is there no perforated edges, perforated edges? Like, can I not rip this? Like, where the heck do I rip the toilet paper until I realize it's just crazy, crazy long. There's this running joke in the United States that people say, only use one square to wipe, only one square. And you're like, really? That one square? Like, that's what I mean, use to wipe? But I get it. Like, if you're in the UK, like, that one square is like one long rectangle, and you could probably make just one of them work if you're just peeing. Too much info, I know. But another cool thing was the flushers. So in the public restrooms, you had, like, these um, sensor flushers where you just wave your hand in front of it or you pressed a button on all the toilets in the UK. Totally love like the button or the little hand sensor. In the United States, in our public restrooms, we have these sensors. They are right on the toilet and they're supposed to sense when you get quote up, unquote, from the toilet. But what ends up happening is it just flushes while you're literally sitting down on the toilet going to the bathroom and it is the worst because sometimes the toilet's like, like splash at you it's really nasty and our toilet seats are like open at the end we're in the uk they went all the way around there was no opening another type of flusher that we have on our public toilets is a flusher like this and you just press it down to flush but they're so gross we always use our shoes we just put our foot on it to push it down <laughs> Um, sticking with the bathroom theme, one thing that the UK did not have is toilet seat covers. Like, this is what I missed. I want a toilet seat cover because public toilets are gross, and I don't know who sat on that last, and I just kept putting toilet paper on everything. Like, where are you guys' toilet seat covers? Come on now. Now, not all sinks were like this, but some sinks had the two faucets and two knobs, one for hot, one for cold, and this was like a little throw off because... The hot was very, very hot and the cold was very, very cold. And I wanted to like, can we just mix the two so we can have warm water? Um, one other thing was 
everywhere in the UK had air dryers only. Like, I don't know if I saw a single paper towel dispenser in the UK. We have paper towel dispensers in pretty much all of our bathrooms here in America. We do have the air dryers, like those are common too, but most places also have the paper towel dispensers and we typically have a trash can near the door so that you can use the paper towel to turn off the faucet and to open the door and throw away before you leave. And I did miss that in the UK. I did wish that there were paper towels. I get that the air dryers are environmentally friendly, but you just miss that paper towel because I saw way too many people leave the bathroom without washing their hands. Sticking with and finishing the bathroom was the showers. Every single shower that we used had like this half wall kind of a thing. What is up with the half wall? I'm not trying to be rude, but the half wall like water gets out. In the United States, we either have like a complete wall, it's like a door that slides or opens, or you have a curtain that goes almost all the way to the floor that just covers the entire shower so that no water escapes. And I really did miss that in the UK. I mean, I did get used to the idea of like having the shower pointed down, like very far down into the side and like <laughs> trying to like scrunch up so that no water spilled out. But I was like, what in the world? I also totally loved the hot water rack thing rail thing it was in almost every single hotel that we were at and it was in all the bed and breakfasts that we went that is not a thing at least in las vegas we are far too hot to ever need that okay i lied one more thing about the bathrooms is that there were no outlets in any of the bathrooms we stayed at in the uk only shavers only outlets and this was super strange to me how do you do your hair like plug in your blow dryer, your straightener. What if you have like a power toothbrush that you need to charge? In the United States, we have at least four outlets in the bathroom. And ours, we have one of these plugs because believe it or not, we actually have a TV in our bathroom. Not that we watch TV getting ready, but like if you're taking a bath and you want to watch an episode of a TV show or a movie, you know, you have the TV right there and you can kind of relax. And I'm not saying I need a TV in the bathroom because it is kind of overkill, but it would be nice to have an outlet. Another strange thing was that in the hotels, you needed to put your key card in like this little key card machine in order to work all the lights. Uh, all In all the hotels that I know of in the United States, this is not a thing at all. You just walk in, turn on the light, and it's good. So I didn't really understand the need to put the key in there because if you've already paid for the room and already accessed the room, the electricity should work. I don't know. Um, okay, so I knew going to the UK that you guys loved your duvets. What I did not know is like the top sheet is like not a thing at all. You have your duvet and you pull it back and that's it. And then you guys actually use a top sheet to cover your mattress. Not a single place that we stayed in had a fitted sheet. In the United States, we have our comforter. We have a very light one because it's so hot. A top sheet and you have your pillow and then you have a fitted sheet around your mattress so it stays on. So that was interesting because if you get hot, then you just take off the comforter and you still have a sheet. But if you're cold, then you put the comforter back on. Now, please know I'm not knocking anything about the UK. I'm just pointing out the differences. Another difference that we noticed was that all the switches to the lights were on the outside of the room. This was new to us because we kept walking in the rooms and like flicking the lights and being like, wait, why is it to a different room? So what we noticed is in the UK, your light switch is on the outside. So you turn on the light switch and then I guess you walk into the room. And when you're done, you walk out of the room to turn the light off. This is different because in the United States, our light switch is right as you walk in the room. So you walk in the room, you turn on the light, you're ready to leave the room, so you turn it off before you leave. And in a lot of places in the United States, we have this dimmer, so you can actually make the light brighter or uh, darker depending on the mood that you need, the time of day, whatever. So that makes it nice that like if you're just waking up and you don't want it like bright and blinding your eyes, then you can have it nice and like dim. But the strangest thing that I noticed was the switches for the outlets. In order for the outlet to work, you had to turn the switch on. So you plug in your whatever, your cell phone charger, and you had to turn the switch on. This does not exist in the United States. We just have outlets. You plug your whatever, your blow dryer, your computer charger, your light, and the outlet, and it just works. It's just on. There's, just, there's no on, off. There are in certain rooms maybe a light switch that will connect to it. So instead of having to like walk over to turn on a lamp, you can turn it on through a light switch. But there's no like actual switch to make the outlet itself work. It just works on its own. Moving on from outlets, let's talk about food. Um, 
English and Scottish food was good, but like it was strange having baked beans for breakfast. Baked beans is typically like a barbecue food that you would have at lunch, maybe dinner. I'm not the biggest fan of baked beans. I don't eat it a lot. Um, but man, the British love their meats, especially the Scottish. Lots of meat and baked beans for breakfast. That was new. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not a baked bean person, but it was just different. The other thing was is that all the drinks are served in glass bottles and you get a glass cup to pour the drink into. In the United States, Typically, like you buy things from a can, you're not going to get too many glass bottles. And if you go to a restaurant and order a pop, or as we learned, it's called soft drinks in the UK, then it's from like a, it's called a fountain drink. It's a fountain drink. They have a dispenser. They just put the glass underneath the dispenser, fill it up, give it to you. You're good. But in the UK, it's like in a glass bottle, here's your glass and no ice. Like ice does not exist. In the United States, ice is a really big thing. Like you're going to get your cup with at least half ice, sometimes even like three-fourths full of ice. And then you have to tell them, oh, light ice because you can't fit as much of your drink in there because there's so much ice. And if you order water, you don't typically get like a bottle or pitcher of tap water. They'll just fill up the tap water. Um, But one other thing that I noticed about the UK is their Fanta drinks. I do not like Fanta. Fanta is a super, super, super sugary drink here in the United States, and it's very strong orange or grape or cherry flavored. Um, But Nick had ordered a Fanta in the UK, and he's like, oh my gosh, you have to try this. And it was freaking amazing. It was like Sprite with orange juice or like carbonated sparkling water with orange juice. It was so freaking good. So I am a fan of this orange Fanta from the UK only, just saying. And I have to brag about the squashies. We do not have squashies here, and I'm 95% sure it's Han Solo that got me addicted to these things because he sent them to us. And they are freaking amazing. I have looked on Amazon, and they don't sell the rhubarb and custard ones. They just sell the original raspberry and cream flavor, which are good. But I had to pick up several bags of the rhubarb and custard squashies because they are like my absolute favorite. Now, this next one I know is probably not really a legit thing. I'm sure most refrigerators refrigerators in the UK are not this small and it's just in the flat that we stayed at but in the United States our refrigerators are large like this is an extra extra large refrigerator um typically most refrigerators will probably be about half to three-fourths the size of this one but this is like my dream refrigerator because it's one side's a refrigerator one side's a freezer but this is like how we um how we shop in America. We just buy a lot, you stick it in your refrigerator, and you don't go back to the grocery store for like two, maybe three weeks. Okay, let's move away from the kitchen and food, and let's talk about your guys' windows. Not a single place that we stayed at had a screen over the windows. Like, you open the window, and it's just there. Like, you want to fall out that window, you're going to fall out that window. Flies are going to come into your window. Like, if you open it up too high, birds could probably even fly into your place through your window. In the United States, we have screens that cover it. And I don't know if you can tell, but if you look specifically at the roof of the house across the street from here, you can see like it looks like wavy and there's a mesh. We have this mesh screen over all of our windows so you can open up your window, but no bugs or birds are going to fly in. So that's one thing I think the UK could probably adopt. Another thing was nowhere in the UK that we stayed had fans on their ceilings. And maybe the electrical isn't put in for it, but it was very, very strange because you guys don't have ACs. Well, some places do, but most places don't have air conditioners. So you would think it'd be common to have a fan. In the United States, we have fans in almost every single room. You're going to have a fan in pretty much every single bedroom, your family room, if you have a loft. And since we live in Las Vegas and it gets to like on average 40 to 45 degrees celsius in the summer we actually have ceiling fans outside so in our backyard we have a patio cover um you can kind of see it in the photo and we have two ceiling fans out there so that you can still hang outside and be somewhat cool now naturally there's a lot more differences in scotland and england versus the united states but those were just some of the major ones that we chose to talk about There were definitely some things that I liked better in Scotland and England and definitely some things that I liked better in the United States. So it was really cool to see the difference between the two. But I hope you enjoyed this little um, difference video. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.